One of the important trends for us in the industry is that FPGAs are becoming the heart of the system. It's important for us because as FPGAs are becoming the heart of the system, customers expect more things from companies like Antela, and the an important one of them is that the FPGAs are now the key part of the design, and because of this, affects their design productivity very much. There are two trends in the industry that help this trend of FPGAs moving to the heart of the system. One trend is that the development of alternative technologies like ASICs or ASSP is becoming more and more expensive. When the development is becoming more expensive, it's more difficult to justify the development of an ASIC or an ASSP for many markets, in fact, any market, with the exception of the very, very high volume ones like cell phones or PCs or iPods. The other trend is that FPGAs, which many years ago used to be very expensive and very slow compared to ASIC or ASSP, really caught up in terms of the performance. So today, you can take an FPGA and connect it to any new memory and support any new I.O. standard. So not only that from the economic perspective, customers would like to use FPGAs, from the technical perspective, FPGAs can deliver the capabilities that the customers need in their system. One very good example of the trend is wireless base stations. If we look at the GSM base station of a few years ago, and we look at the wideband CDMA 3G base station today, the FPGA content is more than 2x today than what it used to be in the 2G or GSM generation. The reasons for that, they don't run at very high volumes. Obviously, handsets are high volume, but base stations are not. They need a lot of performance, they need a lot of DSP capabilities, and FPGAs can deliver them uh, exactly what they need. So wireless base station is one of the better examples of how FPGAs are becoming the heart of the system. Different parts of the base station have different requirements, and because of that, we we'll use different variants of our offering. If we look at the RF card here, there's a lot of DSP processing functions like digital free distortions. This part of the base station would typically use the enhanced family with a lot of memory, a lot of multipliers. There are other parts of the system that once designed don't need to be able to, uh, the customer doesn't need to be able to change them all the time. In that case, they will prefer to use hard copy because it gives them much lower cost and much lower power consumption. The main challenge in 65 nanometer is power consumption. Let me show you why. If we look at Stratix 2, a 90 nanometer high-end FPGA, let's say the density is 1.5 million gates, and it consumes a certain amount of power. When we go to 90 nanometer, sorry, when we go to 65 nanometer, we can double the density. When you double the density, so you go from 1.5 to 3 million gates, you double the capacitance. When you double the capacitance, unless you do something to address power consumption, your power consumption will almost double. To make things worse, when you move from 90 nanometer to 65 nanometer, the leakage goes up. And when leakage goes up, the static power consumption goes up as well. And this is what we see here. And to make things even worse, in many cases, when you go from 90 nanometer to 65 nanometers, you want to have higher performance, and higher performance means higher frequency so the power consumption will grow even more. 
but in many systems there's a power budget that the customer cannot exceed. It can be sometimes because of cooling limitations, like in base stations. Sometimes it's because you need to connect to a certain bus, and the bus has some uh, power budget that you can't exceed. So unlike performance and density, where customers can continuously get more and more in every generation, power consumption hits a certain ceiling, and you can't go above this. Power consumption was the main thing that Altera tried to address with Static 3, and because of the innovation that we have here for power consumption, not only that we don't increase the power consumption compared to 90 nanometer, but in fact, the power consumption at 65 nanometer will be much slower than that at 90. The most important and most innovative uh, part of our power solution is what we call programmable power technology. In programmable power technology, we take the FPGA and we divide it into blocks of logic, blocks of DSP, and blocks of memory. And we look which one of those blocks reside on the critical path. All the blocks that reside on the critical path will run at high performance and will consume power accordingly. All the other blocks in the design don't need this very high performance, and because of that, we make sure will not consume a lot of power, and the blocks that are not used at all in the design, we make sure that they will consume even less power. Because of this capability, we can tell the customers, in your specific design, you will get the performance that you need, and you will get the minimum power consumption overall. It's not specific to an application, it's per the design. So if the customer changes the design, once again, they will get the performance where they need it, and minimum power consumption everywhere else. It is very significant because, as you can see here, we look at many, many customer designs and try to see in all these designs how many of the blocks reside on a critical path and because of that need to have this high performance and what percentage of the blocks can benefit from this programmable power technology. And as you can see here, in almost all cases, only 20 to 30 percent of the blocks really need to have this very high performance. Without the programmable power technology, the entire design, the entire chip, will run or will run this high performance and will consume a lot of power. Because of our programmable power technology, those 20 to 30 percent will run at high performance and will consume power accordingly, the remaining 70 to 80 percent will consume much, much less power. One of the most important themes for customers and for Altera is the customer's productivity. The programmable power technology doesn't just help customers with power consumption. We, with our Quartus 2 design software, do everything automatically for the customer. So it's not like we provide the customer with the capability and they need to do a lot of work to make sure that they get the best performance and the best power consumption. The customer designs the FQGA the way they always did it. Our Quartus 2 design software automatically does everything that I described and make sure that they get the best performance that they need and the best power consumption. Programmable power technology and Quartus 2, because of that, don't just have an important power message, they also have a very important productivity message. 